Hello again, pre-calculus students. In the last video, we learned about how to graph polar coordinates. Today, we're going to learn how to do uh, graphs of different curves in polar equations. Now, in rectangular coordinates, we're used to graph, we know how to graph lines, we know how to graph circles, hyperbolas, ellipses, all the conics. There are some very interesting graphs that we can do in polar form, and those will be in the next few videos. In this video, we're going to cover only um, lines and circles. So those are pretty easy. Let's get started. <coughs> so lines and circles in polar equations. A line through the origin has the equation theta equals a constant. And we'll go over um, what that means in a moment. But angle theta, because our polar coordinates, you recall, our polar equations are in r and theta. Theta is a constant. There are some lines that, are, that do not go through the origin, obviously. We're not going to cover those in this video. So here is a graph using um, polar graph paper which I've mentioned in, um, if I didn't mention it in a previous video, I put it on my website. You can download Polar Graph Paper from principlepaper.net. Awesome stuff, that's where I got this. <clears throat> anyway, this red line is the equation, here's my pole or origin. This is the equation theta equals 45 degrees. It's a constant. So just to show you some of the points, here's the point one comma 45 degrees. 3 comma 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is in its direction with positive r's. If we go to negative r's, we're down here, what you might consider 225 degrees. But it's still a 45 degree angle. It's just that this is a negative 1 for r, and this is a negative 3 for r. So you can see that all these points have a 45 degrees as theta. So theta is equal to 45 degrees for this line. Theta equals 150 degrees. Well, here's 0, 90. Um, did I do that right? Huh, I might have graphed that wrong. I'm just checking here. It's 120. Huh, my bad. That should be 165 degrees. I'd better change that because each of these lines is 15 degrees. How did I not catch that in all of my preparation? <clears throat> anyway, wow, that's embarrassing. So anyway, um, at 165 degrees, these are all the positive R's. These are all the negative R's. So. That's the line theta equals 165 degrees. And then here's 300 degrees. These are the positive R's. These are the negative R's. <clears throat> so that's how you do lines that, are, um, that go through the pole. All right, how about a circle that's centered at the pole? That's r equals a constant, a radius, r for radius. So if the radius is five, all those points would be five units away and they would be on a circle. That should be obvious to you. Let's, take a, let's think of some other circles. We have two other types that we can graph very easily in polar form. One is a circle to the right of the pole, but it touches the pole on the left side. And that's the equation r equals a cosine theta. And if you want to circle above the pole, kind of like sitting on top of the origin on the pole, that's a sine theta. Let's see. So if you want to, you can do an input output table, also known as a t table, where you have your independent variable and your dependent variable. What's interesting is that when we've always done um, rectangular coordinates, 
x was the independent variable and y was the dependent variable. <coughs> but in polar form, even though we do it r theta, theta is usually our independent variable. You choose theta, the equation chooses r. So if you put your calculator in um, degree mode, you should be able to come up with these same numbers that I'm coming up with. So at zero degrees, R is five. So if that were on the XY plane, that would be the point five zero. It would be five units to the right, zero units up, or five units away at a distance of, or at an angle of zero degrees. You go up to 15 degrees, so if you're on that <clears throat> circular graph paper, um, you'd go up to the 15 degree line, but you'd only go 4.83 units away from the pole. If you were to graph all of these points, and you can pause to uh, record those points if you'd like, what you're going to get is a circle. So we're going to graph r equals 5 cosine theta in Desmos, <coughs> just because I don't want to spend the time doing it here on this video. You, can, you have time to do it at home if you'd like. <coughs> So we're going to go to Desmos here, and you'll notice that it's in XY um, coordinates, and it's in rectangular form. I'm going to click on the settings here, and I'm going to go to polar. Ooh, very cool. I'm in degree mode. I'm also going to turn on um, projector mode. That makes um, things a little darker, easier to see when you project. All righty. So, Let's do my first graph. <clears throat> R equal, equals five cosine. And then I don't know how to do the symbol for theta. I'm just going to type theta. <clears throat> and it converts it to theta for me. And it does it from zero to 180 degrees. And you'll notice that it is a circle. So here at zero degrees, we're at five units. Here at 15 degrees, we're at 4.83 units. Let me check out my list. Here at 30 degrees, we're at 4.33 units. Um, 60 degrees is gonna be two and a half because the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. And here we are at one, two and a half. So um, when you go from zero to 180 degrees, it actually makes a complete um, circle. And you should be able to generate an input output table if you want to do it for every 30, 15 degrees. <clears throat> You'll see that at 195 degrees, when you're down here, you would be, have a negative R that would put you um, back out here so you'd be redrawing the circle from 180 to 360 degrees so anyway um, we'll come back to this but in the xy plane what are the coordinates of the center of this circle what's the radius of this circle and what's the equation of this circle we'll be able to answer all that quickly but you can see what is this five telling us it's telling us that the farthest distance from the pole is going to be five units. <clears throat> we'll come back to that later as well. So you should graph um, r equals five sine theta on your own, and you'll find that it's a uh, circle sitting on top of the origin or on top of the pole. So you'll notice that um, five cosine theta, um, cosine, y'all, we always think of it as an x term. So that goes along the x axis. And sine is a y term. That's going to be straddling the y axis. Graph it and see. Of course, make sure that when you make your input output table, if you do it that way, rather than Desmos, um, make sure you're in the correct mode for whatever um, angle measure you're using. So I already asked you, what is the equation of that circle? Five cosine theta <coughs> in rectangular coordinates. Well, you could tell it was centered on the x-axis at the point two and a half zero. And it went from, the um, diameter went from zero over here 
to five over here. So if zero to five, that means it was halfway across, two and a half zeros the center, and it has a radius of two and a half. So here's x minus the two and a half, here's y minus the zero, x squared plus y squared equals I, r squared. We can show that with some algebra, <coughs> that that's gonna be the case. The equation was r equals five cosine theta. So r is, um, since x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Remember, we're just converting x, y coordinates and r theta coordinates. Cosine theta is x over r, which is x over this radical. So, we'll move that down for a moment. <clears throat> r equals five cosine theta. And this again is just a rewrite of five cosine theta. So what we'll do is we'll multiply both sides of this equation by this radical. So that gets rid of the radical here. <clears throat> Subtract 5x, and I'm going to complete the square here. I'm going to group my x's together. Take half of negative 5, or take half of negative 5. It's negative 5 halves. Square it. You get positive 25 fourths times 1. So if I added 25 fourths on this side of the equal sign, I have to add 25 fourths on this side of the equal sign. This was called completing the square, so we can write this as a perfect square. And there it is. There's x minus two and a half quantity squared plus y squared equals two and a half quantity squared. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what we've learned in this video is that r equals a cosine theta or r equals a sine theta. Um, in, polar in polar equations, that's going to give us a circle. This one's gonna be along the x-axis. This one's gonna be along the y-axis, touching the pole, because r, if r is gonna equal zero, then that's gonna be touching the pole. What does A tell us about that circle? I'll give you a hint. Is A the radius, the diameter, or the circumference? <laughs> Well, since A is the maximum distance from the pole along the diameter of the circle, A gives us the diameter. How would you make a circle that was on the left side of the pole touching the pole? Think about that. Or um, underneath the pole touching the pole? I'm not going to give you the answer, but I'll just point you in the right direction. Notice I put up here the absolute value of A. So that probably gives you the answer anyway. That's all I have for this video. Um, let me stop sharing here so you can see my face big as I say, have a great day.